Hi guys and welcome to the Unholy Death Knight um, single target and AoE rotation in 7.35. So first I'll be going through the legendaries for single target and then AoE. So for um, single target talents, first one you want to be taking bursting spores. This is the fact that um, Unholy is based on your bursting spores. The way you get bursting spores is um, festering strikes. So when you Festering Strike, you see that I have Festering Runes on the target. And my Clawing Shadow, which is one of my spells, bursts each of these Festering Runes. Your Festering Runes is, is what gonna, is going to be your main source of damage. You want to be dumping your um, Runic Power into Death Coils all the time. Don't bother with um, using Death Strike because it's just not that good at all. And I'll get into why you want to be using Death Coil as much as possible. So, um, yeah, Bursting Spores. Festering Wounds deal 50% more damage when burst, and all enemies within 8 yards of Festering Wounds suffer 90,000 shadow damage. It's more the fact Festering Wound deals 50% more damage when it's burst, so that when you're bursting, and sometimes you burst quite a lot, you'll be, um, you'll be doing a lot of damage with them bursts. So next, what you want to take is um, Pestulant Pustules. You want to do this because every 8... Festering wounds you burst, you gain one rune, which is obviously really, really good. Because when you get your um, tran dark transformation, you're going to be popping a lot of wounds. And, you know, uh, Unholy does a lot, a lot of burst DPS. Like, one of the best burst DPS classes at the moment. Just people don't know how to use it. So, like, when you're popping, it's a really slow burner. But once you've got all your uh, festering wounds bursting, you're just going to get so many runes. Next, what I take is... Uh, clawing shadow just the fact that it deals 242 shadow damage and it's guaranteed to cause a festering wound to burst so it's just really really good to get your wounds bursting um next one it's down to you but i like taking sludge bearer just for the fact it looks cool with the abomination and your abomination has a stun and he'll use it on cooldown so in case you're you know not used to using asphyxiate and stunning the target your pet's going to do it automatically i always take lingering apparition in the next one just because it, you just need a movement speed. DK is so cooked for movement speed. And that's why not a lot of people like to um, play DKs at the moment. Because their movement speed is so cooked. And people don't like having classes that don't have any mobility. So, you can either take Infested Claws here. Your Abomination Cleaver has a 50% chance to burst a uh, Festering Wound. But I just don't like that. I'd rather have Shadow Infusion. When your Abomination is not transformed, Death Coil will reduce the remaining cooldown of Dark Transformation. The quicker you get Dark Transformation up, the better. Because Dark Transformation causes your pet to have something which bursts wounds. So you don't need Infested Claws, Shadow Infusion, so you can get that uh, Dark Transformation up. I always take Dark, dark Arbiter in this last one, just for the fact that um, it's going to be doing really, really big damage. So when you start off with Single Target, what you want to be doing before pull is, if you have it, use Army of the Dead early. Let the cast finish off. A lot of people don't let the cast finish off. And you want to open up with Apocalypse, due to the fact that it's going to spawn loads and loads of ads for you. So you want to start off by just getting Festering Wounds out, just slowly but surely. I've got loads of weak auras because it helps me a lot. So I'm just going to make sure that my target has loads and loads of um, Festering Wounds, and I'm just going to start popping them, just gradually. As you can see, they're just popping off at the moment. Just as you can see, I wasn't using my Death uh, Coils. You want to make sure that you never get to um, high Runic Power. You just want to make sure you're using it all the time. And make sure your target always has Festering Wounds up, so there's always potential for them to burst. Now, as you can see, I'm doing really big damage. And now that my Dark Transformation's down, I've got to get ready to start using my Death Coils. So that I'm building up the amount of time that Dark Transformation comes off cooldown. So now I've got a little bit of Respite, so I'm just going to start using my Clawing Shadows now. Because I've got a lot of Festering Wounds up, I've just got to get bursting them. And one thing I want to do is make sure Virgilant Plague is always up on the target. So now you see I've got a, um, another Dark Transformation up because of the amount of death calls I did. So now I'm just going to put more Festering Wounds on the target and just start popping them again. Just going to start using my um, Death Coils, put down the Virgin of Plague again, and just make sure they're really just bursting all the time. The legendaries for single target you want. A lot of people use Cold Heart, which is what I've got. Every two seconds you gain a stack of Cold Heart, which means whenever you use... You're going to put Chains of Ice into your rotation because it's going to deal a lot of damage. Because I've seen I've got 20 stacks, which is what the uh, chest does. If I use my chains now, they hit really, really hard, the chains do. So that's why people use the chest. But let me just quickly go and holy. Yeah, and a lot of people either use the, um, the chest or sometimes the ring. A lot of people think the ring's really good because you get um, 
you get bursting sores. So it means you can use Ebon Fever as well, which just increases your DPS a lot. All servers just pretty useless. But now I'll go into the um, AoE talents and rotation. So what you want to take is a bursting sores again, just for the fact that you know it's going to deal loads and loads of damage because it's going to be whenever you use festering wounds, like they can pop and spread, so it's really really good. Um, next, what you want to take is epidemic. I always use this because. It's just really, really good, and it's going to deal a lot of damage. Because Epidemic, your Virginal Plague is going to spread, and you can just start using Epidemic, so they all flare up, and you can do really, really big damage. So once you've dotted everything up with a Virgin Plague, you can just start using Epidemic, and you'll do really, really big damage. Next, what you want to take is... Um, you want to be taking Unholy Frenzy, due to the fact a lot of your wounds are going to burst gradually, and you're going to have loads and loads of attack speed built up, and you can just smash it down into them. Next one, again, I just take Sludge Bearer just because that's stun, which the pet has. You don't have to use it. Uh, next, down to you again, I like taking Lingering Apparition. Just, you know, just for that good old movement speed. Next, what you want to take is um, Infested Claws, just so you can get more wounds popping. And you can deal really big damage to everyone. Um, next, what you want to take, what I usually take, is the Defile. Due to the fact that it's going to give your um, Death and Decay just more damage. And the more they stay, the more um, ads stay in your defile, the more mastery you get. So the way you want to start with um, with AOE is you literally just want to give. So if we take example here, you literally just want to dot everything up with Virgin and Plague. And then start spreading out your um, festering wounds on each target. And then start flaring up with your epidemic. You can just start flaring them up. you got to make sure put down your epi um, defile so it's hitting loads of targets so you're getting that extra mastery. But just try and spread out and make sure Virgin Plague's on all the targets. And you're just using Epidemic to flare it up. you got to make sure you're using your death kills again. See there, I, was, I wasn't I was using it and it's just a waste of DPS. So you just want to make sure all your plagues are up and you're just popping, 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 popping your plagues. And they're going to burst and they're going to deal really big damage to everyone. So now I use my death kills, flare everyone up with Epidemic and you're just going to be doing really, really big damage. Put down my gargoyle, make sure everything's started up, get the wounds bursting. Just get everyone burst in. You can deal really big damage. Especially when all ads are stacked up and you're getting really good mastery off the file. You're going to be dealing really, really big damage with your um, AoE. So yeah, that's it for Unholy DK in 7.35. If you have any suggestions, then um, comment in the comment below. But yeah, Unholy DK is really fun to play. But it's, you know, people just shrug it off because of its mobility and it's it's awkward to play. But once you build it up, it's a slow burner, but once you get all your um, wounds out and you can start popping them, you just do crazy, crazy deeps, especially for AoE. But yeah, that's it. See you in the next.